there were credible projections that the unemployment rate would rise to 15 per cent and that there would be a deep and scarring economic contraction. As I said, it was a scary time. And even well into 2021, large parts of the country were still in very stringent lockdowns. The government and the RBA responded forcefully to these developments. At the RBA, we wanted to build a, build a bridge to better times and to provide some insurance against the very worst outcomes. And I know that the government had a very similar mindset. In the end, this approach worked. The Australian economy avoided falling into the abyss and then it bounced back pretty well. With the benefit of hindsight, my view is that we did do too much. But hindsight's a wonderful thing. None of us can predict the future, and we had to make decisions under great uncertainty and with incomplete information. We got some things right, but we got other things wrong. I can assure you, though, that the staff of the RBA and the members of the RBA board have been relentless in their pursuit of doing the right thing and supporting the economic prosperity of the people of Australia. So I'll leave the RBA after 43 years proud of our contribution to the stability of the Australian economy and our financial system. As I've said a number of times, I didn't have a crystal ball. In the absence of a crystal ball, I found it helpful over the years to, ref to return to some fixed points. And I'd like to return to four of these fixed points today. The first is the importance of strong, credible frameworks for economic policy. For monetary policy, this means a strong nominal anchor in the form of a medium-term inflation target. And for fiscal policy, it means a credible fiscal framework that deals with the medium-term and the intertemporal budget constraint. Since the early 1990s, Australia has been very well served by a flexible inflation target centred on the 2 to 3 per cent range. This target has successfully anchored inflation expectations and it's provided the organising framework for monetary policy decisions. I think we've really seen the benefits of this over the past year or so. I think without the strong nominal anchor, we would have faced a much more challenging environment when inflation spiked higher. At one point during my term, when inflation was low, there were calls to lower the target. And recently, some have called for a higher target, hoping to avoid the cost of disinflation. I've consistently argued against such calls. It wouldn't be much of a nominal anchor, would it, if the inflation target was moved just because the tide was running one way for a while. People would rightly wonder what would happen when the tide inevitably ran the other way. Having chosen a target, it's best to keep with it unless there's a compelling case for change, which there is not. For fiscal policy, an anchor is also important. Governments face many demands on their budgets and when they borrow today, they need to be able to service that debt into the future. Some countries have not dealt very well with this intertemporal aspect of fiscal policy and public debt levels keep rising. My view is this is storing up problems for the future. Australia has done better on this front, but we are not immune to the pressures on the public purse and those pressures are growing. And given this, a strong commitment to a fiscal framework that address the intertemporal budget constraint would help, and I think it's important. A credible medium-term framework is also useful in the area of uh, infrastructure investment. Australia's growing population means we need to keep investing in public assets. Some years ago, I spoke about my concerns that we weren't doing enough in this area, partly due to government concerns about taking on debt. More recently, my concern has been that we're doing too much in too short a time. A well-established framework based on rigorous independent cost-benefit analysis would help the country plan and sequence public investment. It would also lower risk premiums on private sector investments and it would give the public confidence that our money was being spent wisely. 